During this year for priests, we've assembled this short series of videos featuring our college seminarians, as well as a few of our priests in the Archdiocese of Cincinnati, to answer that question of how do I know if I'm called to the priesthood? And what does a priest do the rest of the week? We see our priests on Sunday, but what happens Monday through Friday? As you can see in these series of videos, it's a busy life of visiting the hospital, visiting the sick. Uh, it's a, a busy life of taking care of parish ministries and meetings and opportunities that present themselves in the life of a parish, but also a life where the priest maintains his own hobbies, his own skill set, his own interests. If you're interested in more information on the priesthood, I invite you to visit our website, CincinnatiVocations.org. Feel free to give me a call at 513-421-3131, or you can email me at vocations at catholiccincinnati.org. Thank you and God bless. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Now, some people ask the question, well, what can we do to encourage, you know, young men to think about the priesthood and to consider the priesthood as a possible option for them? And part of me wants to say that's the wrong question. The real question is, what do we want to do or what can we do to encourage young men to be the man that God is calling them to be? If we can put into their mind and into their heart the desire to be a true disciple of Christ, and to realize as they grow older that that really is their road to holiness and therefore their road to happiness, then they're going to ask the Lord that question, what do you want me to do? And if we can get them to ask that question starting in the eighth grade, ninth grade, then I think they're going to entertain that question of priesthood. They'll think about it seriously, they'll pray about it, and certainly a number of them will decide to give their lives to the Lord and trust Him with their future and with their happiness. I'm a movie star today. Look, they're taking pictures of me because we're going to make a video uh, to show in schools about what it's like to be a priest. So hopefully, if I don't crack the camera, uh, <laughs> then, then they'll have a video that you all will get to see. Okie doke? Okay. All right. So I wanted to come over and say hi. How you all doing? Good. Are you cold? Yes. All right. Well, that means you want to move around a lot, right? Yeah. Stay in the sun. One of the things I love doing is visiting the children in the school. I, I, I tell them, I say, pray for me, pray for me that I come back often because I get very busy with all the other cares and responsibilities and we, a week, two weeks, three weeks may go by before I, I, I visit the kids in the school. But I love visiting the children in the school. If I get a chance, I go in, I spend some time in the classroom, maybe they ask me some questions. I find that if if I let them ask me questions, they ask much better questions and we talk about much more interesting things than I would have come up with on my own. Uh, and, it, and I just enjoy being with them. I, I want them to know that their pastor cares about them. Uh, when I was a boy, I didn't know my pastor very well. Uh, and if, if the children uh, in, in my two parishes feel like they know me well, that I'm their friend, that they can come to me and I'll look after them. 
that's a great privilege. Uh, it's one of the reasons why they call Priest Father. This is my chalice. It was uh, bought for me for ordination. Um, comes from Spain. I picked it out myself. I got a, it's new. I, I wanted a new one. And it has an inscription on the bottom to Father Anthony G. Tazi on his ordination to the holy priesthood of Jesus Christ from dad, mom, family, and friends. And you know, when it came to the actual ordination, I wasn't nervous. Even I was a little surprised by that. I wasn't nervous. I, I'll see that as God's gift to me that day. That I was just there receiving what He wanted to give to me, what He had called me to nearly a decade beforehand. And I was open to His grace. And I was looking forward to this new life. You know, it's a radical transformation in life. I mean, from this point forward, I am a priest. I'll be looked at differently. In public, things are different. I'm a more public person than I've ever been. But it was good. It was so good. Yes, that day is special. Nothing can replace that day, and without that day, I couldn't be here. But it's about more than that day. Because priests aren't ordained for themselves. We're ordained for other people. Somebody might ask, well, what's important about a priest? Why is a priest important? And why is it that we have to pray so hard and work so hard to, to promote the priesthood? And one time I stood up in the pulpit and I gave a homily about priestly vocations, and I put it this way, no priests, no Eucharist. Uh, we need the priest to celebrate the Holy Mass. We need the priest to be the instrument of forgiveness through the sacrament of confession. It is the priest who comes when someone is dying and says, I want to be anointed in the name of the Lord. I want to, be, uh, I want to have peace of mind uh, as I approach my final hours. People call for the priest for that. The interesting thing is that I really didn't want to be a priest. I thought about it maybe in the eighth grade. You know, once or twice you go on a retreat, it becomes something people suggest, oh, you could do this. But in terms of being in high school and all my years in high school and after high school, the immediate years after that, it wasn't something that I pictured myself doing. I enjoyed being outside. I enjoyed working. Um, and so being a priest wasn't part of my vocational plan. Lord, what do you want me to do? And it's when I began to ask that, somewhere around the age of 21 or so, that I really began to think, well, maybe this is what the Lord is calling me to. I thought about it uh, until I was 25. And I had reached the point by that time where I realized I could not get married in good conscience unless I first gave it a chance. So I sold my business and went to the seminary. This is why God created me, to do this work with and for Him. And it's sad that a lot of people never get the chance to say that. And I think sometimes it's because they never ask that first question, what do you want me to do?